there. That's a lot better. Well, let's get us going here tonight. I'm going to jump right on in this and uh, uh, without any further ado. And uh, we're going to get into what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm going to start it off uh, by reading a verse. And I think it's a real familiar verse for most of us. But it's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. So if y'all want to look with me in the 11th verse of the 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. And like I said, it's a pretty familiar verse, I think, to most of us. But I'll go ahead and read it now. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. <clears throat> now this has always been, to me, it's a, a pleasant and a, and, a, and a blessing of a verse. I mean, just think about it. It's, it's, it's say, the, the Lord said that I know the thoughts I think toward you. And it's, it's, it's good thoughts. It's thoughts of peace. It's not evil. It's, and it's, you know, to give you an expected end. That's a, that's a wonderful... He won't, it's saying God wants good things for us. He wants wonderful things for us. That's what it's saying. It says He don't want evil or bad for us. But now I have to ask you the question, does anybody... Really, do you realize the circumstances surrounding those words that Jeremiah wrote? I'm going to tell you, even if you do know, it, it wasn't during a time of, of great prosperity and peace for the, for the nation of Israel or for Judah. Matter of fact, it was written to, the, to the, the, the children of Judah that had been taken away captive into the land of Babylon. It was written to a, to a people that most likely would never return to their homeland because we know that you know, Jeremiah had prophesied to them already. That you know you're gonna be you're gonna be in captivity for 70 years, so you know most of them, if not all of them, would have known this. They'd have known that that Jeremiah had prophesied that, and seeing how he had been pretty accurate, they're probably by now thinking, well, he's probably right. So they know they're gonna be gone for 70 years. So most of these people that he that Jeremiah wrote this to, these captives, knew that they were never gonna go back home. They're gonna be stuck in the land of Babylon. It was written to a people that had seen some pretty horrific things done to their families and their friends by the armies of King Nebuchadnezzar. It was written to a people that had no worldly reason to hope. These words that have blessed me many times, and I'm sure many many others, that they, they, they give so much peace to so many people. These words were written and given at a, at a time that would seem completely despairing and desolate. I mean, you're talking about it's written to some folks that have, have been, I mean, whooped bad by the conquering armies. They've been drugged to a land of way off over yonder because they couldn't get on the Amtrak or the Greyhound or even in the back of an old army truck and be hauled over there. They had, they had to walk all the way from from Jerusalem and to Babylon. So these <clears throat> these folks, and, and, and they know, I'm not going back. I'm being held captive. I'm never getting to go back home. But Jeremiah wrote to him and he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's what he wrote to him, and that was the time he wrote it to him. Now, if you look over in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 55, we're going to read verses 8 and 9. And once again, I think this is, this is a couple of verses that most of us are familiar with. But it's Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. And it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Now see, most of us, we think of, uh, of blessings from God in our time. And most of the time we think of it not just in our time, but in our right now. Because that's the way we are as humans. Most of the time we just live in right now. That's when we live. That's what we think of. That's what we do. It's, it's right now. And I, I know there's there's a lot of folks that, that say, well, you know, I... I I do good. I'm a good Christian and may be a good Christian. 
But I think each and every one of us, at, at times at least, we're guilty of saying, God, why ain't you blessing me? I've been doing good for you. I've been leading souls to Christ. I've been, I've been doing what it is I'm supposed to do. Why? Why ain't I getting blessings right now? Why didn't I get that job promotion? Why didn't I? Uh, why? Why didn't uh, I get picked for this or for that? Why didn't I uh, get that money? Why didn't we? We will ask that sometimes. I think every one of us have done that at least once or twice. Some of us a lot more, and some people even think that being a Christian means that you are going to be blessed physically in this world right now all the time. But we read then in Isaiah that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And they're so diff vastly different that it's compared to how much higher the heavens are than the earth. Well, if, if you believe the Bible, then that means there's no end to it. So we can't even begin to fathom the way that God thinks. God sees far more than we see. He sees all humanity. He sees everything. But not just everybody. He sees everybody in all time. And He sees everything. Right there, we start getting kind of confused, I think, a lot of times if we really try to wrap our heads around what that means. That God sees everything, knows everybody, and He sees all time, and it's all at the same time. And, and there we go. Oh, my, it starts blowing up. His ways and his thoughts are far beyond the mind, for certain. Some of y'all may have me quote, but I know it blows my mind. But he sees all of this. See, we have the limitation, and I'm going to use something I believe some of us can figure out here. But we like an old mule. And we got that we're limited by them blinders. And them blinders don't allow us to see anything but what's in front of us. And most of the time, they don't allow us to see anything but what's in front of us, right in front of us. Because once we got our blinders on, we usually got our old head down too. And that's all we see. And it's a rare thing that we will actually see that stone that our plow is going to encounter a couple rows over and later on in the day. So we don't plan for we don't look to that as being part of what God sees. God puts in place the things that will allow for His future. Not for our desires. So He sets in motion the things that He needs in motion for things to happen as He would have them happen. Now that lead led me to look over in uh, another real familiar verse. In the book of Romans. And in the book of Romans, in the, the 28th verse of the 8th chapter is one that I think just about everybody knows. Even those folks that don't go to church and stuff. But at Romans 8, 28 tells us, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Now, I, I believe that is probably one of the most misunderstood verses by people in general that's around. I just think, I believe it is. Because I think most people look at it and think of it. I remember when I thought of it this way. Well, that means that me being a Christian and me doing what God, what I think God wants me to do, that means that everything's going to be good that happens to me. And that's the way I think a lot of people think of it. And then they, they wonder why there's good things not happen to me even though I'm I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I am being a Christian and seeking to do the will of God. Well, if you read through it again, you, you'll recognize and you realize that it makes no mention of our dreams or our desires. It don't say anything about that. It speaks of all the things that happen in this old world do so for the accomplishment of God's plan. And some would say, well then what, how has that got anything to do with my good? Well, because when I'm living in the Spirit, and when I'm praying, and I'm studying, and I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian, my desires will tend to be more of what God desires. 
I'll want for my life what he wants for my life. And that's what that that's what that good is. That's what that's what that goes that's just beginning to touch on the things that of his thoughts and of his ways. It's just the beginning of it. Now if we'll look on down in uh, verse 35, I'm gonna read verses 35 through 39 to us. And it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So regardless of all the things that happen that we consider to be bad, and, and even when Christians are being killed just because they're Christians, just because they love the Lord, just because they profess Jesus Christ is my Savior, and yep, that happens a lot in this world. Don't happen too much around here, thank the Lord, but they brothers and sisters in Christ all around this world, who they do, they die each day. They're in prison. They have their houses burned down. They, they have their jobs taken from them. They have all these sort of things that bring them misery and, and ruin <clears throat> as far as what we think of that can be misery and ruin. All of these things happen every day to some Christian brother or sister around this world. But even in that, that is the plans of God that are being carried out. And we say, well, how can that be the part of the plans of God? Well, God's plans, they give us an expected end. It's what it said over there in that first verse we read tonight. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, it said it, to give you an, an expected end. Well, now, I don't know all of everything that that's supposed to mean, but I do know this. Regardless of what happens to me here, I know what's going to come when I leave here. I do have that expected end. That's part of God's plan. And that's what we started tonight on in Jeremiah 29 11 talking about the plans of God and how they are good plans. And they're good plans for us that love the Lord. But now look back at Jeremiah in that same chapter, chapter 29, and let's look at verses 13 and verses 14. That is Jeremiah 29, verse 13 and 14. And it says, And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall seek for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Now, <clears throat> this is Jeremiah writing to those captives. And he's reassuring them that you are going to get to come back. But there's more to it than that. That's also to the church. And that is for us to seek God and to find God. And we will be turned away from our captivity so many times the things that we think that are bad well they're actually things that are good now they may not be good right then at that moment they may be bad right there at that moment but they are good because you see a lot of times bad times will return us to seeking the lord and not just seeking the Lord, but seeking the Lord with all of our heart, just like it says in verse 13 there. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. So those bad things happen. And it turns us, it turns us back to seeking God, but not just seeking Him, but seeking Him earnestly with all of our hearts. Now even if, if here on earth, if, if we don't ever see a return of what we think of as good or the good old days, 
kind of like with those captives that had been told this captivity is going to last 70 years and and that basically meant that most of the ones carried captive if not all would not never make it back to see their homeland that's the that's what they could buy now like i said they're they're starting to believe old jeremiah may just have a line to the lord and them other fellas may have actually been them false witnesses they kept t- talking good to them but he even if we never see that return, as long as we are God's children, as long as we're His people, we will lose the chains of bondage in the end. No matter where we are here, we will lose the chains of bondage. We will, He will, turn away our captivity. Our captivity to sin. Our captivity of this old flesh and blood body that instinctively wants to sin that naturally wants to go the same path that adam started so long ago in the garden that's our that's what that's our captivity our captivity is not being able to be in the presence of god and not being able to not sin but we will be turned away from that we will that captivity will be taken away we'll lose that for sure in the end matthew henry wrote one time he said Though the return of the prosperity of the church does not come in our time, we must not despair, for it will come in God's time. And I think that's what we got to remember. It may not be that we get to see the return of, of our nation to being a nation that, that follows God, that seeks God. We may not get to see that in our time. That may not be in the cards, as they say. That may not be what God's plan is for us. We may not get to see that. But the things we do have an impact on whether or not that will happen in the future. If the Lord tarries, if we seek God with all of our hearts and make that our priority, then maybe it's just possible that our children or our grandchildren will get to live in a land that seeks the Lord again. And that's blessing enough, I believe. Because by that time, I'm already getting my blessing. And that can't be took away. But oh, wouldn't it be nice to know, to be able to know that our children or our grandchildren or whatever live in a land that seek God again. It may not ever go back to being what we call the good old days. And as I've heard some say, the good old days really wasn't as good as they as we like to think about, but it may not ever even get to a point that's as good as we used to think it was. Not here, it may not. But the thing is, is if we'll seek the Lord with all of our hearts, it might just get back it might just get to that point for somebody in the future for us. That'd be a, that'd be blessing enough. God's plans are good. Whatever they are, God's plans are good. We know without a shadow of a doubt that his plans are for the peace of his people. It says so. We're told that right there. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. That saith the Lord. Jeremiah wrote it. Right after the Lord told him right. We should never doubt God's plans. And we should live like we know what they are and that they are nothing but wonderful. And they are for peace and they are for good and not for evil. That's the way we ought to be living. And that's the way people ought to be looking at us and saying, Whew, look at that, look at that old idiot. He acts like it's everything's good and hunky dory. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Because we know we haven't expected him. We got told that right there. But that's about all we got for that tonight. We're gonna jump right on over here now into in the prayer list. Now this got sent to me, and I'll try to read it. The handwriting's better than what I'm used to, you know, so I'm going to try my best. But we need to remember the church, our church, Oak Grove, and the church of our community, the, the, the brothers and sisters throughout the world, the persecuted Christians. And, and y'all, if you don't, uh, uh, Voice of the Martyrs is a great uh, organization, or at least I believe they are. Uh, they'll send me a magazine there, I think it's about every month or so. And I get to read a little bit and learn a little bit about our, our, our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, and, and you don't have to cost you anything. You give what you want to give them. And, uh, you know, it helps out with their ministries all around the world. 
But it gives you a little insight on what it's like to be a Christian outside of the United States, especially in those places that are hostile to Christianity. So let's remember those. Let's remember the persecuted Christian. Um, and, and, you know, in particular, a Shamu that we're praying for, the youth group, uh, and, and hopefully the whole church is praying for. And that's, uh, he's, he's a Christian that, uh, that carries out his ministry in Nigeria. Uh, so remember them. Uh, there's a lot of persecution there. Uh, I know there's persecution in the central part of that nation uh, from one group, and then in the northern part of the nation, there's a there's a persecution from Boko Haram, uh, you know, and they're trying to set up that Islamic Islamic state uh, there. So remember them; they're, it's pretty rough. Let's remember our military and their families. <clears throat> let's remember the United States. Let's let's pray for our president. Let's pray for our elected leaders. Let's pray that the Lord would move in their hearts and lead them and guide them to do what's right for our nation by God. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for Israel and the peace of air. Let's pray for the first responders in the prisons, for hospitals and nursing homes, uh, for the Gideons, the highway shepherd and his ministry there. Let's pray for the lighthouses. Uh, you know, all those, those kids, they, they need your prayer for certain. Uh, we need to remember them. Remember the sisters in spirit, the youth group, and, and the teachers, and everybody that was here. And 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 just because you sit out here, if you want to come in and join us of the night, y'all know you're more than welcome. We'd love to have y'all in there. Uh, it's a blessing. I can assure you of that. Uh, and as Daddy has, has said here lately, uh, you know, if you want to see what we got going on, uh, Josh gets it put on YouTube. Usually, I think uh, a few days after it happens. I'm not sure exactly how he does it all, but hey, it's on there. The link is on Facebook. Okay. And Josh just told me that the link to that YouTube, our YouTube page, is on our Facebook page, the Oak Grove. Yeah. It's on the Oak Grove Facebook page. We'll try to share that around as well. Um, I want to remember Audrey and, and her family, Betty and her family. For Sister Wanda and her family, of her, uh, and, and Eddie had wrote in uh, Sister Judy, and, and she, I know she's got heart uh, issues, I guess, now. Um, I believe that's Ann, yes, Ann Parker and family. For uh, uh, Sister Della and Sister Shirley. Uh, for Sister Annette and Brother John Burks, let's remember all of them. And remember Mike Parker. Uh, uh, you know, he had his surgery. I, I, I believe he's doing pretty good from what I understand. Uh, you know, seems like it was, it was helpful and he's coming right along. Uh, so y'all could continue to remember him and his healing. I talked with uh, Brother Richard, uh, I guess it was this morning or yesterday, even last time I spoke with him. Uh, Melissa Yates is doing, doing better. Now, she's still got some pain, obviously, from the surgery. But uh, uh, the last I spoke with him, she wasn't experiencing any more of the numbness or the headaches that she had been having. So, Lord willing, that surgery has done, you know, took care of that. And, and, and she's going to be doing a lot better. So, y'all just continue to pray for them that she'll heal on up and uh, and get to doing a lot better. And there's a lot more on the list here. But I, I've got a mark, and that's where I, I believe I'm supposed to stop right now. But uh, if you got any any requests, you know, you can make sure you get it on here. But just remember them. The Lord knows. Uh, but we'll still call them out every chance we get. So, Let's do that. If y'all would, let's bow our heads. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another wonderful evening that you've given us, for a wonderful day that you've given us, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to come to your house to, to study and to worship and to pray and to, and just to gather together and have fellowship one with another, Father. We thank you for that blessing. We thank you that we can do that without any persecution, Father. And we pray that we'll continue to be able to do so in all those around the world that, that can't. Oh, Father, we'd love it if you would allow that to happen for them as well, Father. We'd love to see a mighty work all around this world. A revival, Father, that folks turn to you, Lord. God, it would be a beautiful and wonderful thing. But whatever your will, I pray, Father, that you give us the strength to do what we're supposed to do and the understanding to do what you would have us to do, Father. I pray that you would hear all these requests that's been, been mentioned, all these names, Father, you know them. There's many. There's many more that's not been mentioned. I pray, Father, that you would touch and you would heal and you would lift up and you'd give encouragement to all these that need it. Pray, Father, that you would just shine your light on them, Father. Give them a little love, Lord. Let them feel it. I pray, Father, that you would heal and you would give peace and give comfort to all that need it. I pray, Lord, that you would go with us for the remainder of this evening. And 
and, and take us safely home at the end of this evening. It be your will to give us that time. Bring us back here safely, Father, at the next appointed time. And I pray, Father, that you would just bless each and every one here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.